Did you ever have a moment of clarity? A moment where there's a shift and you realize that you might have a really strong decision to make. And you might regret it for the rest of your life if you don't make that decision. Well, I had one of those. It was August 2011, and I was making my first show combining science with theater. And I think I was just, I was, I was missing something. I was, I was looking for something. Because I had this background in engineer and science, two degrees in engineering and a PhD in science. And in 2003, I stepped away from that and pursued a career in the performing arts, thinking that that was it. But something was still, something was still not right. And I was using particle physics as a way to try and figure out what that was, as you do <laughs> in life. And uh, I started looking at all of the decisions that I'd made in my life. And in the show, I made a video of them as if they were still existing. The girl who stayed on in full-time research in academia. The girl who stayed in her first job as an engineer working for the London Underground. The girl who emigrated to New Zealand and took that job in fish gut research. <laughs> Thank God I turned that one down. The girl who wanted to be a ballerina. The girl who wanted to be a Muppet. Yes, I made that one. The girl who wanted to be an astronaut. And for the girl who wanted to be an astronaut, I borrowed, borrowed the flight suit from the European Space Agency and lined up a load of science fiction movies and hit record. Clearly having tons of fun there. <laughs> but what was interesting was, as I continued to record it, something shifted inside me, and it actually got quite sad. How do I feel in the suit? I feel... Um, I feel more sad. It feels very real that I'm not an astronaut. What do you do with impossible dreams? When do you let them go? Have you let yours go? Because I realized in that moment I hadn't let mine go. I have wanted to be an astronaut since the age of eight, and I've always known. I knew at eight, I knew at 18, I knew at 28, I knew at 38, and yet I had done nothing about it. Why was that? I mean, I had all these degrees, I kept myself so busy, and I think it was two things. I think one was that there were no role models in Ireland at that time telling us how to get to space. And secondly, and more importantly, I think I was afraid. I was afraid to fail. I was afraid that because this was this big dream of mine, what if I didn't achieve it? Who was I then? Who would I become? But thankfully, because of the years I'd spent in the arts, I had shifted my perception of failure and, and success. And I had realized that it was just part of life. And so at that age, I sort of went, well, why don't I just try? What's the worst that's gonna happen? And in that moment, I had a moment of clarity and I did something about it. And then two years later, it took me another two years, I went to Blackrock Castle Observatory and I met with Claire McSweeney. And I told her about this crazy dream of mine of go to go to space. And she said, right, let's make it happen. And together we applied for funding to Science Foundation Ireland for me to put together a show in 2014 about my year of trying to get to space. And it began with um, an article in the Irish Times announcing to the world, and I was terrified. I didn't know, I thought people were all going to laugh at me and say, oh, stop it, Neve, you know, stupid dream. But the opposite happened. Everybody got on board and everybody encouraged me and everybody was so lovely that they wanted to help me. And I'm sure, I'm not stupid, I'm sure there's people out there going, what is she doing, you know? But the great thing about people like that is they never tell you to your face. <laughs> sure they don't. So I didn't care. It's true. So we made the show, 
and it premiered in the Fringe Festival. And then we toured it all over the world. We brought it to the Edinburgh Fringe and the Adelaide Fringe. And what was lovely was after the show, or people would contact me directly, they would come up to me and say, thank you, you've inspired me to consider my own life choices, which was, which was a beautiful gift. But that was 2014, then what? So in 2015, I thankfully got a scholarship from the European Space Agency to attend the Space Studies Programme, an intensive nine-week programme that's actually happening down in Cork right now. And I was around 120 people from all over the world who shared my dream. So when I said, I want to go to space, they were like, yeah, get in line, you know? But there was also people there that were thinking way bigger than me, that they were thinking about Mars and conducting experiments to prepare for Mars. And out of that, I was invited to participate in an application to go to the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah, in the middle of the desert, one of eight habitats all around the world where you can conduct research and simulate life on Mars. And I was part of that expedition that I was invited to, and we went there in January. And I was really worried. I mean, you know, not being able to shower for two weeks, being chronically dehydrated, eating freeze-dried food in a confined tin can eight meters in diameter with a block toilet for many days. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I did it. I was really resilient. I was way better than I thought I was going to be. And it, and it made me think, it made me think, yes, I, I, I'm actually a valuable crew member. I can do this. And another great thing about it was, was I brought this little lady with me. This is Stargazer Lottie, isn't she beautiful? With her red hair. And when I came home, it was great to have, know that I had her with me because I go into schools now with Black Rock Castle Observatory and Lottie and we talk to young girls and ask them to think about what they want to be when they grow up and the power of their own dreams. And Lottie is coming with me on my next expedition in Moscow where I participate in a zero G or a microgravity flight bringing Lottie with me and other objects that people of Ireland want me to bring with them. It's part of my campaign to bring you with me as much as possible in my experience. And in October, I present my next show, A Hand in Space, which is a culmination of work with Black Rock Castle, again, sponsored by Science Foundation Ireland, working with the Astronaut Centre in Germany. And this is about the massive human effort to take one, bring one person into space, because we are just one person on our own, but together we can make anything happen. And then I want to go to on a longer term duration mission, simulate life on Mars again in another extreme environment, hopefully the Antarctica for about six months. And then to aspire to be part of Elon Musk's grand design to colonize Mars in the next 100 years. I want to be one of his minions that goes ahead and lays down the foundations for the plan. And I feel I'm really, really fortunate. And 90% of what I do, I fund myself. It's um, it's funded by working with corporates, giving keynote speeches, or emceeing scientific and technical conferences, or being on the radio and TV. But the great thing is, is in all of that, I get to visit schools, I get to talk at science festivals, family festivals, promoting women in STEM, talking about the wonders of space and science, and how to aspire to be our very best selves. And I hope when you have a moment of clarity in your life, that you have the bravery to just really think about that moment and think about the consequences of not doing something about it. Because we're here for such a short period of time and we're all in this together. We are one person on our own, but together we can do anything. I mean, here we are all sitting together in the Board Gosh Energy Theatre in Dublin with an area of approximately 1,200 square kilometres in, er uh, in Ireland, area of 84,721 square kilometres. In Europe, area 10.8 million square kilometers. On Earth, area 510.1 million kilometers. Earth, which is one planet, surrounded by seven others, orbiting our sun, 449 million kilometers away from us. Where our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is 4.3 light years away. And all of this part of one galaxy, the Milky Way, 100,000 light years in diameter. One galaxy of many galaxies grouped in a Virgo cluster, and that cluster is grouped into superclusters. And there are 55 superclusters within the observable universe, the edge of which is 46.6 billion light years away from us here, right now. That's where we are in the Borg Gosh Energy Theatre. <laughs> So 
So, my name is Neve Shaw, and I have this dream, and it keeps bringing me in unexpected and extraordinary places, like coming here today to share my story with you. And it's my dream, and I'm going to achieve it. Thank you.